how we have after positioned ourselves to make things very tight even for the employers to select five out of thousand people or thousand applicants will be the way forward to, for us to do and that is we have to look at our own selves look at what the employers would need these days and not sit down for us to be asked to do something but at least we ourselves going or taking the first step to add value to our own selves so that before the employers come out to look for such candidates we already have. I can actually talk of Gideon himself. Gideon is a trained metallurgist, but how did he land in the training department? You can actually ask him this question and he will give you a lot because he wants to stay relevant and he took the opportunities that actually came on his way. And now this is where he has majored. How have you also prepared yourself? In mining, we can decide to do a lot. People have only planning background, people have only uh, operational background. People go to dewatering, others go to dry and blast, and what, what are you? But some other people have the opportunity to go through all these disciplines. And they, when there is an advert which would need maybe two out of the five areas I've mentioned, then this person actually is the first man to be chosen because he had made himself relevant. I'm not talking about mining alone, like Smith talked about. He said some people on the social science background, the social science background, not knowing what the mining department or the mining sector needs in regards to actually employing somebody from the social, uh, social science department or social science background is a problem. And that is it that the person has not actually read around to see what, what he can actually um, also give out when he's in the mining sector. It is not necessary that you have to become a mining engineer. It is also not necessary that you have to be a metallurgist before you go into the mining area. It is that you have to read around to understand what each and every uh, uh, employer or company requires. And you can actually change, switch from like Gideon has done. You can also do the same. Make yourself relevant. Don't wait. There are thousands of people in your in your in your area. You are a mining engineer, and we are looking for safety officers. And you will sit in the house and say you are not relevant these days. You can change your profession. Do something bigger than you have thought. Do something different from what you have actually done, and stay up relevant to the times so that you can actually take some opportunities that may present themselves. So these are some of the things I would want to talk about. Maybe when we get to the question times, a lot of people would raise something, questions that would demand us to add more flesh to what we have said. But this is exactly what I want to talk about this evening. In some other times, we would add more to it, and that is it. All right, uh, thank you very much, Samuel. So in building momentum, the summary for us is that we have to remain relevant with the changing times by following the trend and ensure that we have what it takes to be relevant. And also take our chance and also take every opportunity that is good for us to remain relevant. Here, I would want to say that uh, being relevant, especially when you are employed, is not a duty of the employer. Just like someone has said, all the short courses that he took, he would, if he would want to open up for us, most of those programs were made by, by himself. 
So if you say that you want to look at your um, uh, your employer to remain relevant, uh, and then I'm start to say that uh, you be miles and miles behind uh, what the industry really is seeking for. Uh, but at this stage, the floor is open for questions. Uh, if you have any question to ask either Samuel or Benny, uh, this is the time for you to let us hear you out.